Welcome to my tutorial on compressors. Let's just go right ahead and dig into the matter. Well, what compressors basically do is they automatically control the volume of an audio signal, or to use another word, it controls dynamics, which just means the movement or the going up and down of, a, of the volume. For example, vocals can be very dynamic when you sing very loud. Oh, when you sing very soft. Well, and a compressor just helps to even this out. That is the main function of a compressor. It also has another function, which would be to give percussive instruments, such as drums, more of a punchy and harder and heavier feel. So to show you now how compressors really work, I need some highly professional visuals, as you can see here. And there's a beautiful diagram. You'll actually find this sort of diagram in a lot of digital compressors. What do we have here now in this diagram? On the axis down here, we can see the volume of the input signal. And on the axis up here, we can see the volume of the resulting output signal. And this line going like a bishop shows us how the compressor is working or what it will do and yeah, you'll see. So just for the fun of it and to give you something to look at, let's just put some hypothetical input value. Let's just pick this one here at random. And now you'll see how you read this diagram. You just go up here to the reference line and then from here to the side. And there we have our output signal. So you'll see nothing has changed. Input signal equals output signal because there's no compression going on. In a way, this reference line right here has a ratio of one to one, which means if you go one unit on the input signal, you go one unit up on the output signal. Now what we need to do is put in a threshold. The threshold, sets the volume at which the compressor will start to do something. So the input signal needs to reach this threshold and go above it to be compressed. When it's below the threshold, the compressor won't do anything. It won't touch it. So let's put a threshold. Let's take blue. Let's just put it here. This is our value now for our threshold, which would be somewhere here. Okay. And now you see there's still nothing going on because we haven't set a ratio yet. So let's do this as well. From our threshold, we set the ratio. So this would be one to one. This, when it's just going straight, would be infinite, which is basically for a limiter. I'll still touch on that later. And yeah, let's just take a realistic one like this. Could be four to one, perhaps, perhaps not. Anyway, let's just assume this is a ratio of four to one now, which means when you go four steps to the side, you go one step up. It's basically a value that describes this slope. In other words, the ratio means when the input signal goes four dB above the threshold, it will be reduced to one dB above the threshold. Okay, now let's see with our new reference line what happens to our input signal. So it still goes up here. And now from the new reference line, we go to the side and get our new output signal. And here you already see what the compressor is actually doing. It really is reducing the volume. And this difference between our pink line and our red line is called gain reduction. Also, very important term, because later on when you grasp the concept of a compressor and how it works, you won't actually concentrate too much on the threshold. You'll concentrate way more on the gain reduction. It's much more important. Also, I'll still show some examples later on. So, if we just assume now our pink line is 4 dBs above the threshold, and we have a ratio of 4 to 1, then our red line would be 1 dB above the threshold. So can you guess now what our gain reduction is? 
wrong. It's not 3 dB, it's minus 3 dB because our input signal is being reduced, so you have to subtract 3 dB. But that's just on a side note. Yeah, so far I have discussed threshold, which sets the volume at which the compressor will start to do something. I have discussed ratio, which means how hard the compressor will work or, or how much it will reduce the volume. And then the gain reduction, which measures how much the input signal is being lowered in its volume. Now there are still two other things to a compressor, which is attack time and release time. With the attack time, you basically set how long the compressor waits before compressing after the signal went above the threshold. So let's just say you put an attack time of 50 milliseconds and now the input signal goes above the threshold, then for 50 milliseconds nothing will happen. The compressor won't touch anything and then after the time is up the signal will be bumped down. And release time is basically the same thing but in the other direction. It sets how long the compressor waits before stopping with the gain reduction. And depending on how you set attack time and release time, you can get more of a punchy feel or more of a sustaining feel or, you know, evening out the, the dynamics. All right, I already touched a little bit on limiter. Now I will go a bit more in depth on this. For this, we need a threshold again. Let's just put it here. Oh, baby blue. And then we need a straight line. This is now a limiter. And here you see it doesn't matter how much the signal goes above the threshold, it will always end up on the same output volume. See here? Nothing's changing actually. And the limiter is usable for a number of things, especially in mastering. When you have high peaks going up, especially from the drums, then the limiter helps to keep them at bay. Or when you are picking with a clean guitar tone, then you can also get pretty harsh spikes in there and the limiter helps to keep those at bay. But you could also use a compressor with very heavy settings and fast attack time and fast release time. It probably sounds also a bit more controlled than a hard-on limiter. So now let's come to some examples. So what we have here now is a bass line. As you can see, the volume's going up and down and up and down. It's not that consistent, which doesn't mean that the bassist is bad or anything. That's absolutely not it. And you also see here with notes that are being held, They die down rather quick. And now we will put in a compressor to help that. So let's just pull it here on the insert effect. And here you see this diagram again. So now let's set some parameters. For example, let's put the threshold first of all up high to get a more evened out and more sustained signal. Uh, we will go with a very slow release time basically anything between 400 to 800 milliseconds, depending on how crucial it is with the signal. And then attack, well, for this bass guitar, nah, a quick attack is, is not bad. With a bass guitar, you could also choose a slow attack time, if you, especially if you have more of a slapping and popping thing going on, and you want to keep this, groove in there, then slower attack time is better to let those attacks on those slaps still come through. But since it's not in here, we don't need this. Okay. And now for bass guitar, especially in heavy metal or anything, a harder ratio would be quite good. Something between four to five to one. And now I will lower the threshold and look at the gain reduction. See what's happening? 
it's lowering the volume. That's why every compressor also has a gain knob, so you can pull it up again. This was a gain reduction to uh, up to minus 13 dB, so you can pull it up again pretty high. Okay, and now let's see without the compressor again how the notes die down. And now with the compressor. They stay pretty much very consistent. You also see it on the on the volume meter down here. When you pull this out again, the compressor, how the value is just falling. And with the compressor, it stays pretty much equal. Yeah, and that is the essence of a compressor. Now in this one particular, you also see this knee value and this shapes, as you can see in the diagram, this edge up here, it rounds it off some more. And depending on what you wanna do, it's quite useful. For example, in drums, uh, you do want to have a rather hard edge in here to really have the drums hit this compressor and really have this punchy feel. But for example, in vocals, you could put a knee in there to give them not that much of a compressed sound. It will still sound very transparent and natural when you have a kind of knee in there. But also, again, it depends on what kind of style you're after. Again, in metal, it doesn't matter that much if you put a knee in there or not. That's my experience anyway. Yeah, now let me give you an example for drums. Okay, I just have a raw kick drum here now. Now let's see what happens when I put a compressor on there. Mm, for this we gotta turn off the look ahead. Because look ahead makes the compressor react much more accurately. And it's also very useful for a lot of things, but for drums I tend to turn off the look ahead because it just leaves more of the snap of the kick drum through. Or to use the technical term, the transients. Transients are short and loud signals, and that's basically what drums have. You know, it's the kick and the snare and the toms are all very snappy, it's just short sounds and pretty loud. So you have a lot of transients in there. And turning off the look ahead leaves through more of the stuff. For a more punchy approach, you want a slower attack, somewhere around the 50 milliseconds mark, and a fast release, also somewhere around the 50 milliseconds mark. Turn down the knee, as I have explained before, then a higher ratio, and then we will set the threshold until we notice it sounds punchy. Okay, we turn out the, out the gain now. You notice how much more of a bam it has. And this is pretty much how compressor helps you to do stuff, you know? Evening out, high dynamics, giving more punch to your drums. Very, very useful. Now there's also a thing called multiband compressor. Uh, I can show you this as well, real quick. Uh, where is it? Mastering multiband dynamics. So multiband compressor is the same as a normal compressor, but instead of acting on the whole signal, it only acts on specific frequency ranges. And this is more useful for mastering because in mastering, you also use a compressor to put more of a peak control and of dynamics control onto your whole mix. And when, for example, the drums just hit in with the loud snare and the loud kick drum and whatnot, then a normal compressor tends to lower the volume of the whole mix. And depending on how 
good your mix is and what kind of music style you're producing, this is not very good. But a multi plan compressor helps to keep it much more transparent. So in this way, you don't compromise the whole mix when the compressor is acting. But just smaller frequency ranges and you have much more control over everything. It takes a bit of time to get into it. Then there's another thing called expander. This is basically the same thing as a compressor, but in the exact opposite direction. So it doesn't compress the volume that's above the threshold, but it lowers the volume that's below the threshold. So you can actually cut out noise that you don't want to have in there. So for example, on the kick drum, you hear now there's a lot of, how would you call it, this afterburning of the kick drum. And if you don't want to have it in there, you can actually put this kind of expander in there. Now again, we have something called attack and release time, so we gotta do those accordingly. See, it cuts off this, this ringing off of the kick drum. At noise gate is basically the same as an expander, but with very heavy settings. Pretty much the same as a limiter to a compressor. That's how a gate to an expander is. So yeah, have fun fiddling around with this stuff. <laughs> 